How's it going, Scrub Gamers? It's your boy, Scrub Games, coming at you with a juicy new piece of content for you to enjoy. But, before we do get into the topic of the video, I just want to let you know how you can help support the channel, and that is by checking out Firestorm Games using my affiliate link in the description box below. Because Firestorm Games offer a whole host of products for almost every kind of hobby there is, be it Dragon Ball Super, Pokemon, One Piece, you name it, and they'll likely have it, and at some quality prices too. So just make sure to click the link below and check them out to see the whole host of products they offer while helping support the channel. And also, remember that you can also, and there's another way to help out the channel, and that's by dropping a like, leaving a comment on the video, and best of all, hitting that subscribe button to keep up to date with my content when it drops. Because I'm still on the road to 1k subs, and looking to hit, hit that by the year's end. But now, now we've got all that sorted, let's dive into the topic of the video. Alright guys, so as the topic of the video suggests, it is a never episode of our, of well, my previously in DBSCG channel, basically on over the week's news, all in one video at the end of the week. And for this one, we're continuing on with the anniversary box spoilers and reveals. And yeah, it's going to be interesting, we've, moved, we've already covered all of red, so what we've done with this week, we've gone into the blue cards, the green cards, and near the end started going into the yellow card so next week we'll have yellow and black multicolor and a bit more of the other things that come in the box in the box so without further ado let's get into the video and check out what we've got also don't forget to like comment subscribe as well it does help the channel greatly so let's move to the first order of villains so that's being some of the blue ones so first off the blue because we're going to card order and so the first thing we get in blue is supporting the Gogeta lead. You might be thinking, what Gogeta lead? There's quite a few Gogeta leads. Well, for this one, it is for the promo Gogeta lead. The, uh, the what's it called? Miraculous Strike Gogeta one. And this is a promo one that came that you could get alongside watch, going to watch the movie. I think they brought out the movie into cinemas again and had this promo so you can go. I think that was more for the US than it was for anywhere else. And it's it's a good leader. It just uh yeah, just just not doesn't do well. Mainly because it's in blue and blue is normally one where it's just the best leader that can use all the generic good blue stuff, which uh normally is a tough choice when you've got so many good blue leaders. It's generally the best one is what does well unless it's got a strong gimmick. And with the anniversary box, it's meant to be support for decks to bring up to, to bring out to a level of our format and it doesn't have to make it absolutely busted. It doesn't have to make it absolutely busted just to, to actually work. Just support the help of the deck it struggles with is what, how I feel it's, it's supposed to be done. And I don't really feel like this deck, this support for the leader really does anything because it, does, it doesn't have much outside the leader. you have sure you've got some of the star deck Goji to support you can go into it. But this doesn't really help much. So with, the, with, this, um, with this deck as well, I think it's so far the it might be the only one i think yeah this is the only one we've seen so far that has the leader and the battle card most of them you get one arch type has the sea lead and the branch that has the battle card and we haven't seen the this the fill sea fields which um i'm probably going to go back a whole lot because they're going to be you know, like the new mechanic in this set part of the series and we'll probably see them last to show the sea uh what they do a support for and if, I'm guessing they're not it might not be support for generic like certain decks it might just generic support which would be nice but for this one this deck gets the Z leader being SSB Gogeta Miraculous Strongest Warrior and it gets a Z battle card being Son Goku and Vegeta Prefusion Warriors and then it gets a 5 drop battle card in the form of SS Gogeta Birth of the Strongest Warrior so funny thing with the Z lead it's it's uh, a Gogeta BR, even though it goes on top of a normal Gogeta leader, so that's quite interesting how it changes to BR. Like, I'm yet to understand why that is the case, unless it just... Just so it's got a way to be used with the um, the blue Gogeta BR leader, the promo one. Because you can use the secret from the last set to go ahead, or no, from this set. Yeah, I think this current set to go and... It's like a red extra card that allows you to play out a Z lead on top of your lead as long as the same color and uh, character. So that's a way to get out on that, but then it's gone at the end of your opponent's turn? Or at the end of your next turn? Or your turn? Or something, it just goes off after a, a turn or two. And this one's interesting because it's a one cost 
It kind of requires one energy on top of this specific leader, being Miracle Strike Gogeta. It doesn't work with any Gogeta leader, just this one specifically. And you got um you got to pay one Z energy. It's got a permanent where it gains Gogeta. So even though it's even though the character is Gogeta BR, it gains just the character named Gogeta. So it could be Gogeta and Gogeta BR. That's quite cool. And you got an auto when this card attacks, you draw a card, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards, add it to its owner's hand. Then this guy gets 5k power for the turn. So there is an interesting way you can just give your opponent, if you can give your opponent cards, you can bounce them back to your hand. That's pretty cool. And yeah, it becomes a 20k lead on swing. And draws a card as well, which is quite nice. And the lead, the auto is not once per turn, so it's going to be relevant for some other skills we'll see in a bit when we get in a 5 drop. But this has got a really cool activate main, which is once per turn. You place one card from your hand at the bottom of your deck as the cost. So just bottom deck and card from your hand. Then you add up to one blue Gucci to where energy costs a 5 from your deck, or drop to your hand. So very many places from your deck. If you'd lost it beforehand, you can get it back. So you're not really losing that card for the cost. You're getting a card back, so you kind of replace a card. In your, you're essentially replacing a card in your hand with a five drop Gogeta, which is quite cool. And then, and you shuffle your deck if you look for it. Choose all your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier and negate skills for the turn. So that's something in like the realm of yellow. Just being able to choose all your opponent's battle cards, ignore barrier, and negate their skills. So just a like a blanket, like a board wipe for the turn. Just before you do anything, just add to it main, bottom there card, grab back a cut of five drop of Kajita, and then go choose all your battle cards in your battle area, and you get the skills for the turn. That's really good. It's just a shame that it's on a leader, which also has a... That doesn't have the big benefit in the fact that it's got a deck building requirement, like we've seen other ones, where it's got permanent. That makes it so you can't run cards at six cost or more. I think it is six cost or more. So you're restricted to... Battle cards being five cost or less, which you could think like what what then you just start to think what good secret rare can you run with it? You can't run any most secret rares that are battle cards are high costing because they can be cheated out or they got effects that out to play them and stuff like that. And so you can't run things like Hat Jack. You can't even run things like Andro twenty the Andro twenty one secret rare because in the deck is an eight drop, even though it's like permanent. And according to the Fastbinder with the in the Judge Discord. Like if it's got a thing like that, you can actually include that in your deck, same with Janimba. So that's quite like a bit of an egg. So you have to think of whatever secret res you have, and I haven't really looked into it because I'm not a blue player. I'm not a big fan of blue as it is. Like I've started like roaming up to blue a bit more, but then since I just went like pfft, nah. But uh, yeah, I haven't really looked into what secret res you run with this deck. With this. Uh, deck but it doesn't seem like there's many amazing ones but there, but there are options because i know there's at least the heroines lineage as an option that you can run but that's the leader so pretty decent leader but it's just the leader it's support for kind of lets it down a bit by having that permanent and like it's got a good, good way to self-awaken and they like get you flush with over so you can go straight into this very cheap cost very good effects but then the leader has that annoying restriction of what battle card you, what like level battle card you play and if it didn't have that this would actually be pretty decent i feel but yeah that kind of makes it a problem and we got the z battle card being the goku and vegeta pre fusion warriors this is a five cost one cut oh, well, 5k one cost with, that requires one z energy and it has barrier as well so quite cheap cost to play from your z deck and it's got active main which is limit one a wall of text i know Dragon Ball players struggle with these because they don't they don't really want to read the card. Not that they can't read, it's just they don't want to. Uh sorry if I've uh if anybody takes offense to that, then please don't overact. But then we've got the, the effect on it being if your leader is a Miracle Strike Gogeta or SSB Gogeta Miraculous Strongest Warrior, so either the lead is meant for or does he lead here. And you place one card from your hand at the bottom of your deck and you move this card from the game. So not too many things, just you are losing card from hand, but it's any card to the bottom of your deck. Losing this card as well, and it only works for this specific lead. You add up to one Sun Goku and one Vegeta card, both blue with 20k power, from among all cards in your deck and or drop to your hand. Shuffle your deck if you look through it, and then during that turn, the next time you activate a Union, union skill, on a activate on a well, on a blue Gogeta card in your hand, with energy cost of 5, you reduce the skill cost by one blue and one energy. So make sure Union Fusion Cheaper, so makes the five drop, five drop we've got here, makes that so it's basically, um, yeah, basically just like a, a two cost for its uni, Union Fusion, so one blue and one of any any uh, any energy, make it a little bit cheaper, but you still got to pay the one for this, and then the two for that, meaning that if you want to get the full use of this combo here together, 
you've got the um you got you've got to wait till turn turn four and use all four energy up, really. But uh yes, yeah, interesting. He's always at, it means he's always accessible, this guy, because it's from the Z deck, it means that when you got the five drop you've got always accessible to drop down when you want to. Uh, but and if you and you can get it set up the turn before, playing the turn before, and having barrier means it's got a protection unless they try to get through it without any barrier removal. And then if it survives the turn, you can then do it and then save yourself an energy. It's not too bad. One thing I do like it, like for this card, is that it's a Z battle card that you can help yourself out with um within the set two Vegito because it's a it's a Goku and Vegeta Z battle card you can put out as one of the materials for your Union Patara. So if you've got one out already, or you've, you've, yeah, you've got one out, so you use a cat play Vegeta, you can get something from the Z deck, so you're not using cards from hand, and then just have it. It's barrier as well, so it's protected, and then you can play atop the five drop Vegeta on it. That's one thing I do like about this. I always look to see if uh, any Goku Vegeta or Vegito support can go into that deck to make give it a bit more of an edge. And we got the five drop. So this one is Deflect, Triple Strike. Oh, if I cost 25k, zero cost 5k. It's nice that they're making things that is zero cost 5k compared to how they used to be with one cost 10k. So that way you could put these boss monsters that were really good in your deck, but then you're penalized in hand by having to pay an energy to combo them if you wanted to make them like kind of an option to be dead but very powerful. So with Deflect, Drop Strike, it's got your Union Fusion skill, which is two blue to an energy using a blue Goku and a blue Vegeta card. And it's got an auto when this card is played, you draw one card, then you use it to one of your leader cards, and this card and that card get 5k power for the turn, meaning your leader could be a 20k base, which is nice. So you replace this off in your hand. You don't really draw off the... You know, with a fair few Union Fusion ones, you at least draw one card or two cards. This one doesn't draw anything, but you don't then draw off the auto, so you're losing three from hand, including itself, to play itself and the two uh, Fusion pieces from your hand, and you're replacing it, drawing a card, so you neg two in hand for this. And then you've got a pretty cool activate main, which is limit one for one blue. If you have four more energy, that's the cost. Choose up to one SSB Gogeta, Miraculous Strongest Warrior, switch it to active mode, and it gains double strike for the turn. So that's pretty cool. You get to um essentially make your get your get a swing at your leader at 20k bay or 20k and then uh well the first swing you give, make it 20k. Swing on the first time, draws a card, bounce something back, gains 10k, 5k for the turn, so there's 25 on the first swing. And then use the effect, pay one energy, switch it back to active mode, and against double strike, so it swings again, draws a card, goes at the 30k, double strike base on your leader. That's pretty nice. But that's a lot of setup for something that is even used today and might even not really be used. Like people will probably try out because people do love to try out some things that get support, try out, or if it's a favorite leader character. But with this support, it's nice support. The only problem is like, it doesn't really help out the deck much, I feel. I feel it doesn't help the deck out as much as kind of the support that the deck's needed. So this is nice support, but it doesn't actually help with the deck's issues. So we'll move on to the next one now, because we've taken quite a long time on this one. So let's have a look at the next blue one. So we've got support for Halo Ku. So that's quite cool. That's something I didn't really expect to get, but then it is a decent deck, but it's not one of those decks that you feel in... Well, like when you look at support for anniversary box, you kind of hope it's support for decks that actually need support and actually want support that people play. Like it is a bit, a, a bit, a bit weird how bad I look at decks that are going to give support, give support to it, but don't actually look at what people are playing, what people are asking for, and like their surveys and all that stuff. Which as I don't think they do, but they, they might do. I'm not sure, but it does seem like they aren't too, especially when we come up to green one. Green is probably not going to have support that you expect. But anyway, with Halo Koo, you got two support and two cards. So it got a two battle cards, a bit of Pycon and Pycon Everworld Technique and SS Sun Goku and Everworld Technique. And it doesn't seem to be support for either side of it. So like with the with the Halo Koo, that came out alongside the, blue, the new blue Pycon deck, and their support kind of like went together with each other. Like you could use. You had stuff that they shared, and then their own separate stuff. And this looks to be all for just the Halo Ku deck. Nothing that really helps out the PyCon deck. So it's like to having twin, like basically twin decks, but you're supporting one more than the other. Not anything that uh, supports them. like you've got a PyCon deck, but it goes in the Halo Ku deck, which seems to be a slap of face. But anyway, with these effects, we've got PyCon. He's a free cost with 5k power and a zero cost 5k combo. Same, same with the rest of Goku, apart from his 20k power. And he's got two magnetic skills, 
both limit one. And the first one is actually main that, you, that requires you to play one blue if your leader is an Everlord Buddhaka card. So that kind of, can kind of work with the Pycon a bit. Because I think I believe the Pycon is an Everlord Buddhaka card. And then for the effect, you draw one, play this card from your hand, and place up to one Halo, Angel Halo from your deck in your drop, then shuffle your deck. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head if I have a free cost pike on the board if it's like you need. I know you need to get into the five drop, but the five drop doesn't need a pike on the board to do that, but it's never a pike on for any effect stuff, but yeah, like it probably it goes in, it's a never never will put a for the Kaidoku deck, but it doesn't seem to do anything to the pike on deck. Then you've got his activate battle, which is limit one, discard two Angel Hello cards or Angel Hello from your hand as the cost. Use up to three Neverworld Budokai cards with 5k combo for powerful and you're warping the combo with their skills near the third turn. Now that's actually not, not a decent skill if you're like struggling to get Angel Halo in your drop and you draw into too many of them, but then you've still got better ways to put Halo Ku in the drop. Why like the Halo, Angel Halo's in the drop using the Kai and the Bubbles TP as well as a way to help. So I don't feel this is a like once again, just like with the previous one, this isn't this is nice that it's getting support, but this doesn't do anything to help the deck. The deck needs a consistent way to get the free Angel Halos to the to the drops. So it can awaken with his alternate awakening condition and help with just keep like a uh, keeping consistency and stuff like that. But main thing is to get that ha the Halos as quick as possible in the drops. So you can awaken and actually start playing the game. And this does not do anything much really. Like you can it can get them. You can do the whole one from hand when you play it for the first one. Draw your card, but it's limit one, and you can just get a Kai, which then protects itself, has barrier to protect itself, and can do it constantly, getting one, and even Bubbles doing the same thing as well. So it doesn't do, it doesn't do anything more than what the deck already does. So that's not great. And then we've got the Goku. So this one has Blocker, and it's also is when this card is played. Draw one card and choose up to one of your opponent's power cards, and she costs a four or less to place at the bottom of his owner's deck. So that's quite nice. That's a pretty good one. So it's played. You replace yourself in your hand. And then you get to bottom deck saying four or less. That's pretty good. That's actually quite decent. And it's doing what blue wants to do, not what it's been doing, which is you don't want to bounce things back to hand, so they got the card back so they can play it out again. You want a bottom deck, so you have to go digging through the deck to find it again. And it's got a nice activate battle, which I imagine now you play it cheaper because you want to pay free energy for it. A little bit one though, paying one blue, and if you have two or more Neverworld Budokai cards in your combo area, and you discard one Angel Halo from your hand, play this card from your hand. So that's very easy to do. This combo, you got the effect of the lead. I believe that could combo two angel halos from your drop. Uh, two combo two angel halos from your warp, and then they loot and they could like combo for like one k or two k or something like that, or three k. They they combo for a smaller amount than the actual five k on them, and you've always got plenty of angel halos in angel in angel halo crew to discard from that to get there. So that's pretty good to get us out a nice little battle trick and then a blocker for another attack. So this Goku is actually quite decent support for it, not helping with the consistency of getting the Halos in the drop, but actually is a good card, good support and extra, like a good actual battle card, more angel hit, more uh, Neverworld Budokai cards, and actually a decent card to actually help out. But the Pycon, I feel like it slipped down, like it could, this could have been something useful to help pipe the Pycon deck, you could have one for each, but let's see, we can see which one's favourite, like Pycon just never gets anything good. So, that is for that one. Let's go on to the last of the blue support. And that is for Star Vegito. Now, this one looks pretty decent, but then as soon as I saw this, I was more interested in the support it gives the Vegito, set to Vegito than it did for this actual blue Vegito star. So, it got a it got three cards, this deck, in the form of a one-cost Mai, a three-cost SS Trunks, Sora Connect in the future, and an SSB 8-drop SSB Vegito, Enveloped in Sprite Spirit. So I'm going to save the Vegito as a laugh because I have a, a fair bit to say about this because it is a pretty nice card of sports, not, not just this deck but another one. So we'll start from the Mai first. So the Mai is by Vera from Hope. One cost 4k with Zero Cost 5k combo. They all have the same combo power. But it's got a nice little auto when this card is played. Look at the five cards on top of your deck. And up to one blue Saiyan card with energy cost of four or less, or up to one blue unit with a specific cost of one to your hand and shuffle your deck. And scores a searcher for either. Any any four or less blue Saiyan or a blue unison the main unisons you do well the main unisons you really play in the deck. And then you've got the activate main limit one for one blue. If your leader is back if your leader's back side is SSB Vegito, Godhood Transcended, and you send this card from your drop to your warp, play it to one Gogito uh, Gogeta Pursuit of Power with one marker on it from your hand or drop. Additionally, if you play it from your hand, draw one card. So this is a way to 
just what's in the drop. Play out the unison from the drop, like basically keep the unison around by just using this card. So that's quite a nice card. I'm not sure if like keeping the unison around was the big thing. There are stronger unisons than that. Go cheat at unison, just it's it's just like what it's focused on because it's what came out in the starter, I believe. Uh that's nice support, but not amazing. Then you got the trunk. So this one has Barry Unique, two permanents as well, and it's also a cantrip because it's also it's just when this card played draw a card. So first permanent is if your leader is a blue Vegeta card, and you have a unison with Gogeta in its card name in play, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one, making it a one drop cantrip with Barry, that's cool. And then the other permanent is if this card is in rest mode, your opponent can't attack a unison. So that's, this is pretty decent. I'd say this is pretty good. Mainly if your leader is, well mainly if you're playing the Gogeta unison, which could... Well, it comes with a deck. I'm not sure if it's better than, say, like the hit unison or anything like that. It actually draws you more cards with it. But it's got a nice way to protect your unison so that your opponent can't run into it. And if it believed the unison, I think the blue unison has a way to actually gain markers or doesn't. Or it's got a marker skill that doesn't gain markers but then does something to gain markers by not just simply plossing generically. So this is quite a nice bit of support. But then Barrett is only 15k. Barrett removal is quite. Prevalent. I know the, with the um, leader, if they do remove this, then you basically get to untap and draw. It's cantrip. Contra, cantrip. So, say so if you're playing, this is this is a pretty good, pretty good card. If you're playing the Gogeta, same with my could be pretty useful. This support you could support for that. Same with the um, with the some of the Jiren support. Really, if you're playing the themed version of it with their themed unison, it's very good support. Outside of that, it's not amazing. But then with the Vegeta, that's where it gets a bit better. So this is H of 30k, so a little bit weaker than the one the um, H of Vegetas we've seen before, normally at 35. As Triple Strike and Barry, it doesn't have to flex like the ever H of Vegeto that normally supports what well, you've seen in blue. So that's one little difference. It's 5k less than the ever H of Vegeto we've seen in the game. That's blue, and it's got not got to flex like the ever one has. It does have a permanent where if it's your opponent's turn. And this card is in rest mode, your blue unisons with Gogeta in their card names get back your power. So that's a pretty nice bit of support to help protect the Gogeta unison, making it a bit stronger. While this card is in the board and rest mode. And it's got a really nice also, which is when this card attacks, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and place it at the bottom of the owner's deck. So bottom, bottom decking stuff on your opponent's board is really, really cool. And then you've got the activate main, which is how you play it for cheap in this deck, which is limit one for four energy. Still cheap, still uh, expensive, but cheap considering it's eight cost. If your leader is a blue Vegito card as the cost, play this card from your hand and play up to one blue unison with Gogeta in its name from your hand with one marker on it. So that's pretty cool. You get to play this side out and also the unison from your hand. It has to be from your hand, which is not too bad. It doesn't place a card from your hand at all like the uh, my does. But if you don't have a unison board, you can pay for get a unison and this bad boy out. That's pretty good. And in Vegito, this is really nice because it's another 8 drop you can drop down, it doesn't have deflect, but then we don't see many things with counterplay, it's counterplay in an 8 drop, but that has barrier, so it's not too much, but then there are some things like, this. I know in yellow we've got some counterplays like that, uh, free drop, free drop yellow go, uh, Goku, that if you if they do it on the counter window, window one, this will come out in rest, rest mode, which suck, but they've got a chance because you can bring out the everyone that has deflect. So you wonder, but this is really nice being a, a triple strike barrier. 30k is not too bad, it's only 5k less than normally. But then you've got a nice bit of removal then built into your big boss cards by when it attacks, you bottom deck one of your opponent's cards. That's great. Be able to just bottom deck your opponent's uh one of your opponent's battle cards. It doesn't go for a barrier, but still bottom decking a, a threat or something your opponent's kept on the board. We're not needing attack, attacking something else, removing something else is really, really good. So this is a nice bit of support for set two Vegito, this Vegito, but the rest of the support is if you want to play the f the theme version of the starter, go ahead. But then that's not really what's holding it back, in my opinion, with this deck. So there's good, nice support, but better support for other decks than it's for this deck in the Vegito. And it doesn't really support the deck to help out with the problem it's having and why it doesn't really perform or is really played in this uh, format at the moment. So that's about the way. Let's go on to green, which is it's, it's very disappointing. But we start with the best bit of it. And that is green support in turtles. So green turtles got a bit of support. It's the one out of the uh, out of the decks that's supporting green to get a Z leader because it gets turtles, fiercer rampage. It also gets a cacao card, being cacao strongest crusher in the universe, and then a new turtles battle card as well in turtles meteor burst. So the Z lead is 15k wood critical, and it requires you to 
requires freezing energy for its Z awaken, and its Z awaken outside of freezing energy is simply when your life is at four or less, and you place one four star ball parasitic darkness from your hand, or drop under your leader, goes on top of a green terrors card. So you got to be at four or less life, easy enough because the leader awake awakens itself. But when it attacks, take a life and draw, or take a life and look at top five for a terrors crusher corp card. So very easy to get that condition on your own or with your opponent attacking you, but nice that you can do it yourself. And the only bad thing about this is that you have to incorporate into your deck the 4-star Ball Parasitic Darkness, which no Turtles deck really plays. But if you want to make use of this, which you probably will do, and it's, the card's not the worst, it still can be used as a 5k boost in a, in, a, in a battle. And it can help you get to this, so it's probably worth it in the end to just basically run this. Uh, you just have to find it, the only, the only thing. And it's got a permanent, a pretty good permanent, which uh, is Turtles Crusher Corps cards with an original combo power of 3k in your combo area, get plus 20k, uh, plus 2k combo power, meaning that your free, like your cards that combo for just for 3k power now combo for the same as most things do at 5k combo, which is is actually relevant. Because before you could just you could be like, okay, I'll combo this 3k and I've comboed out like a little bit, but I still comboed out. But sometimes you want to get the full 5k. Sometimes actually, because otherwise you got to combo quite a few 3k just to out combo something that could work. That normally, like say you have to combo at least four cards just to combo out what normally two cards would do the same thing for. So yeah, that is that. And it's still got an auto when it attacks draw one, which is the same as what the awakened side hands on the normal trails leader. But then it comes with this pretty cool effect. But I just still felt this uh, activate main slash battle on the card is still overpowered, uh, what well, overcosted. Like, that's the that's the big problem with Amber Green is that even though they're starting to fix it now with not making effects in green so like really costly, they're still doing it. And this is an effect that costs two green, which still seems expensive for what it is. And that's activate main slash battle once per turn for two green. Add one four-star ball parasitic darkness from under this card to your hand. That's the cost. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and your own barrier KO it. Choose up to three of your Turtle Crusher Corpse cards and switch them to active mode. Then remove this card from the game at the end of the turn. So, sure, it's pop is destroying something through ba uh, ignoring barrier. Well, it's not. Yeah, popping a card, a card of your opponent's, what well, battle card of your opponent's, ignoring barrier, and it's activating main slash battle. That's pretty good. But you still have to, you have to make sure you've got two energy left open. Which, for a green, if you've played any green deck, you don't really want to keep. You don't want to just not use up two energy. Like one energy, sure, you keep one energy open, ready for this, because then you've got the options for this or something else like Stars Coming Out. But leaving two energy open is open for your opponent potentially playing probably Crown if you're playing against Red and stuff like that, and just meaning you're. Paying, you're playing with two less energy during your turn and not getting the full use out of it, just to have this live just in case you need be. And sure, you can over, you can uh, uh, Z awaken this during your opponent's turn. You don't have to already be on your um, Z lead, but then you want to have gone to your Z lead in a battle. So when you do the whole uh, fruit through it might, you dropping this down with this to get then a, a 35k crit for this from one card. Fast double strike as well. You'll put some nice crit pressure with double strike too. And the thing with it switching, like choosing three of your Turtle Crusher Corps cards, switching to active mode, is pretty re irrelevant because they're normally like quite small. And, like there's only one that really has blocker, and normally they're gonna like clear your board because some of your effects do require multiple Crusher Corps on board. And then you lose the uh, fill card in the Z leader in the turn. That's not amazing. Like the popping something through barrier is pretty good. I've now on your leader, but I still feel it should have been one green instead of two green. But that's just my opinion. Let me know if you agree or disagree, and let me know why if you disagree or agree. But then moving on to everyone, we've got Cacao, the strongest universe in Crusher the universe. So we got a Cacao in, for the deck. That's one of those ones that combos and plays itself. That isn't just that isn't your super combo. So you can play a different super combo if you want now. So we got a Cacao to so add up to the names of the Crusher Corps. But I still feel Cacao is probably the best super combo because it's searchable and it still draws. So it's a five cost, unique, like most of them are unique. And all two also first one is if your leader is a Crusher Corpse card. When this card in your deck or hand is using the combo, play this card from your drop and rest mode at the end of your end of the battle. So it does the same thing as most of them, which is just when it's combo from your hand or drop, play it when in rest mode after after the battle. And this is where the good effect comes in, which is also limit one. When this card is played, add up to one card from your life to your hand, so you can take a life if you want. So it's never a way to help yourself awaken, which is really good. So you essentially, if you combo this from your hand, 
or from the top of your deck, whatever, you get to kind of help yourself help yourself self awaken, and also it's technically replacing self where it's taking a card from life. And then you get to choose up to one of your t green turtles cards, and it gets five K power for the turn. Remember, it does say turtles, uh, green turtles cards, which means you can choose your leader, which is sick. So being able to give your leader a five K, like combo this to combat something, then play this and give your leader a five K boost in a green deck is really cool. Like it is a shame that the Z lead isn't a twenty K base since he's powered up and becomes Zeno, and normally there's, there's the ball that's stuck in him gives him a big power boost that isn't reflected on the actual power of the leader. It's the same as the normal Awakened leader, but this cacao allows you to get up to 20k for your turn defensively, which is pretty nice. Then we've got Turl's Meteor Burst. So this is a 4 cost 20k. Has a auto when this card attacks. You choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards to kill it. Look at the three cards on top of your deck. Use it to one crusher, uh, Turtles Crusher Corpse card in the combo. Place the rest of the beat on your deck in any order. Then flip up to one of your opponent's life over. So that's cool. It's never card that helps flip your life over. So if you want to awaken a higher life turtle, then going out taking yourself down to four, you can do that. Because all you've got to do is flip your opponent's life over. And there's a bit of removal too. And it does come down a little bit cheaper than paying four energy because it requires... It's got an active main, which is limit one for one green. If you have three or more energy and the total Crusher Corpse cards... With different card names among cards to use the energy. Battle area and drop is five or more. You draw one card and play this card from your hand. So it's nice that it replaces itself. It's similar to the one, the multicolor one that we've got. That's a really good one as well. And this is pretty cool because it's if just you have you got to, be, you got to have three or more energy. It's easy to get that uh, many crusher corps with different names among your Z energy, battle area, and drop. Very easy to do that. Because you're comboing constantly with uh, your Crusher Corpse cards. And then you can play this out and draw one. And then you've got a way to swing with this. Combo with a Crusher Corpse card. And a uh, Chaos Oink, which is quite cool. And Flip Over Life as well. So this is pretty good support. This actually helps out. Gives it a Z leader that um, gives, like, gives it built-in barrier removal. That doesn't, so you don't have to worry about putting too much in to incorporate it. Uh, it helps with the, co the, like, the weenie combo power of the cards. Also gives a bit of defense by giving yourself a 5k leader when you play this down. Which is pretty good. So I feel this does help out the deck. It just same that it requires you to play the four star ball parasitic darkness in the deck, but a small price to pay for some like nice helpful support. I'll definitely be trying to see if I can get hold like but basically build the deck back up again and give it a try. So that is the first thing. Now we go to the worst of the lot. Well, some of the ever cards that got support that isn't great. And first one we got is Quadku. You might be thinking, what is Quadku? Which one is Quadku? Well, if you remember, Bandai used to do draft boot like draft boxes so boxes that gave uh, you a certain amount of pot packs and some special promo leaders that you could um, play out with friends just basically get, take the packs six packs each open them up build a deck using what one of the leaders you get from the um because you only you got four of one, rather to get one each of the leader in a box so I'd just give you four of the one leader because that's how people's minds work. When you've got four different ones, make it so you can potentially pull the one you want or not pull the one you want and just get four of that card, either the one you want or one you didn't want. And then play out a tournament or play out some games using a deck you've built out of sealed stuff. And one of them, in one of them, they come out with a few good leaders. They had um, the, the, uh, the Stormfrist Krillin, the yellow Goten leader, the uh, Vegeta Baby Lead, and one, the green one for that one was the full size Para Goku, a green Goku GT deck, that just, which is just generic uh, green leader. That on the Awakened side, it could have the requirement to potentially gain quadruple strike and have his attack not able to be negated if your opponent had four more, car four more cards in the battle area, or battle cards in the battle area. And this is some support for that deck. So we got support in the Z battle card for the color and a battle card as well. So we got Pan believing in a grandfather and Son Goku a sign of strength. So out of these two, the better one is the Pan because it's a one cost 5k Z battle card that requires one Z energy. It's got two active main skills, both limit one. And the first one is pretty strong. It's the probably strong effect like on this support. And as if your leader is leader's backside is full size power Son Goku. Your opponent has four more energy, and you discard two cards from with the super combo skill from your hand as the cost. Your opponent reveals their hand. You choose up the three battle cards in it and play those cards in your opponent's battler in rest mode with their skills and gear for the turn. So that's really, really strong. So it is a high costing, and your opponent needs to be a four more energy, and you need to discard two of your super combos. 
but then you get the lucky opponent's hand, so having knowledge of completely of what's in their hand, rip three battle cards from it, any three battle cards, and play them with the skills negated in the battle area in rest mode. So they can't combo with it, they can't use the skills in them, they use rip three cards in your hand. And if they got three super combos in there, you can just rip the three super combos, put them in rest mode so they can't use them, and have the skills negated for the turn. Which is really good. Now, that's a strong, strong effect, but the impro only problem is, it's quite a steep cost. It's got two years, like half of your super combos, which are quite crucial, because they're the ones that are giving you some on your swing, a full 10k combo, and plus replace off to give you to try and find more combo power. Like, and this is what you want in the deck is to finish off with a card strike on your lead and put as much combo power in, in it as possible to make your opponent to like overpower your combo and win from one big swing. And another problem with that is your opponent has to be a four more energy, which is pretty easy for them to get to free energy and then stop charging after that to just basically completely shut off your your effects. You can't use it. So if that happens, you have probably have to use some like some other support. I think there's some, like Zamasu, like from the one of the Zamasu decks that can force your opponent to ramp cards, which you can potentially incorporate. But then you got to incorporate that, incorporate the color for it as well, and it kind of kind of like ruin your consistency unless you want to kind of dedicate to this. But it's a shame that it requires your opponent to be at four more energy rather than three more energy. Because it's always like you can play with three, three more energy. Better you can play with four more. But you can still play it with just three energy, without needing to go to four. And it's just very easy to play around, which is very like it's such a steep cost, and quite high requirement just to have this very strong effect as leader. So it's good support, just the cost is a bit too much. And then you've got the ever skill on it being activated main limit one. If your leader is a green Goku Son Goku GT card and you have three more energy, and you place one card from your Z energy in your drop. Choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and kill it, and then this card gains blocker until the end of your opponent's turn. Now, I'm not too sure why you would care about giving it blocker. Like, you got to lose one of your Z energy just to pop one of your opponent's battle cards and then this card, give, give this card back, uh, blocker. And it's not too bad being able to pop anything. You can just pop any of your opponent's battle card. And yeah, just kill any of your opponent's battle cards by just you dropping one Z energy. But then the whole thing in this game, Blocker, I don't know how that's really useful because it doesn't have Barrier to Protect itself. It's quite weak at 5k and it's got no Deflect. It's just it's just going to be easily removed by anything. So it's the activate, first activate main you want for this, but then it's quite a steep and easy to play around at cost. Now we've got the Sun Goku side of Strength. So this one is a 4 cost 15k with Critical. And if your leader's backside is a full size power, Sun Goku reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by 3. Then he's got two pretty nice autos. First one is when this card is played. Draw one card and then during that turn, your opponent your leader can activate its awakened skill even if your opponent even if your life is six or less. Now that's broke quite nice because the leader does have a way to awaken, like to, um, to awaken itself by when it swings, you take a life and draw a card. Well you take a life and if you do draw a card, I think it is. And needs to get on is awakened as normally just get under four down tap two. And this is a nice one you can drop this basis of counter it play it, replace it off in hand, it's a 15k critical, and then you can activate your life at six, awaken at six or, 6 or less, so you can wake it with higher life, which is pretty cool, bringing it more into the modern format of being awakened at higher life, so that's pretty decent. And then you've got the Ever Alter, which is when this card attacks, use it to one green card with 5k combo power, from you drop in a combo with its skills to get for the turn, and additionally, if you have 3 or more energy, this card gets 5k power until the end of your opponent's turn, meaning that it's then 20k defensively and 20k on that swing at critical, so that's pretty cool. Get some cr nice like early critical swings with this because you just need the because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter your doesn't need your leader to be awakened for the permanent it just needs your leader's backside to be that card you can just like show him to prove it his backside doesn't say your leader needs to be on his backside to get a, to get the cost reduction it just needs to have that side of the it needs to be that leader with that side on the back to then bring down a one cost critical that is a counter now this is really good support just giving you a way to awaken. Like very easy, a very easy and strong card to help you awaken, er, awaken early, rather to help you with like an alternative awaken, awaken a little bit early. Give you some good pressure, being a counter replacing itself and giving you critical pressure, and also be able to get some free combo for your Z and for Z energy for like this the pan by being able to combo something from drop when it swings. So this is a really good card, and both these are pretty good support for it. Like it do help out, but then the only problem is the activate main on the pan, the first one, is quite high cost and easy player requirement. That's not going to make the deck make it a little bit better, but not actually bring it up as probably where it want 
and I want it to be in the modern format. And then we move on to the last one. This is the worst support because it is a support for Super Seventeen, the Green Super Seventeen deck, uh, like deck not even even that old. The decks that older, the decks that older than this deck that need support or people want support for to actually play. There's plenty of green decks that they could do with some support, needs some support, and people want support so they can just play it because they love the deck. But instead, they've gone for a deck that's not even that old. I can't even remember when this this came out. What two or three sets ago? This deck, and it's got some support. And this support, even though it's it doesn't really actually help what the deck struggles with. Like it doesn't do anything to the deck to actually help it out for what in what it struggles with. It's just more things to keep doing what it's doing that isn't great. Because you've got a four cost Super Seventeen Wicked Hell Machine, four cost Hell Hellfire Seventeen Desire Fusion, and one cost Android Seventeen. Force fusion. The first one is Super Seventeen being a blocker. Auto send two cards from your hand from under this card to your warp. When this card attacks, your opponent discards one card from the hand. And at the start of your next turn, you can choose up to one each. Android seventeen card and Hellfire seventeen cards with entry cost of one from your warp. Then play up to one of them to play up to one of them add one of them to your Z energy. Not that great. Like. It's got to stick around, doesn't have any protection, like, and there's, I think, better ones. And you've got the active main of how you play out cheaper. We limit one, two energy, which is quite costly, to about a four drop. It's pretty costly. If your leader is a green machine mutant card, play this card from your hand, place up to one each of Android 17 and Hellfire 17 cards, both green with energy cost of one from your deck on this card, then shuffle your deck. So you think you, you paid, you're paying two green energy just to play this card out and stink. One each of Android 17, Hellfire 17, uh, one cost in green under this card for two energy. That's pretty costly for 15k attacker as well. And all you're doing on the attack is warping the two cards from underneath it, making your opponent discard a card from the hand, and next turn you get to play back one of the one drops to the board and put the other one in the energy. And the only skill I've got on is blocker, and you'll be attacking, so it's not going to be an active mode. doesn't make sense really. Like it's not good support. <laughs> That's not helping with anything the deck struggles with. And you got the Hellfire seventeen Desire Fusion. This is te is ten K, it's counter attack uh limit one to get the attack player's card. And a permanent player for cheaper, which is if your leader is a green super seventeen Z leader, you may play activate this card's counter skill from your hand without player's energy cost. So if you're into the Z lead, which is what you want to go to as soon as possible, then you can use this card as a negate that negates and plays itself for free. That's pretty good. That's a good effect on it. And then when this card is played, you've got the auto, which allows you to choose up to one of your opponent, one of your mono green Super 17 battle cards, and it gains the following skill for the turn. Also, once per turn, when this card activates blockers, which has got active mode. And that's not even great. Like, sure, you can get multiple blocks, but they're normally you're just going to get removed, uh, KO just knocked off the board before they can really do that. And then you've got the Android 17 Force Fusion. So this is a 1 cost 4k, doesn't have barrier to keep it around and protect itself, but it has two activate mains that both limit one. So if your leader is a green machine mutant card and you switch this card to rest mode, draw one card and place up to one Android 18 or cell card, both green with entry cost of one from your deck or drop under your leader. Then just offer your deck if you look through it. So that's quite cool. Like you can basically rest itself, then draw one and play and, and put an place a Android 17 or eight or a cell that's a one cost in green from your deck or drop under your under your leader and shuffle your deck. Now when you, as soon as you rest it and use that effect to score sure you get the draw card you replace it from your hand but it's not going to survive the turn because as soon as you put just go swing into it and get rid of it because it's only 4k. Then the ever activate skill is activate what activate main limit one if this card is under a green super 17 card as the cost choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards place it under a super 17 card on top of this card, then just switch a Super 17 card on top of this card to active mode at the end of the turn. Now this is the only card that actually does something decent for the deck. Like the Super 17 is trash, it's terrible, it's too costly, and does next to nothing. Like for same to energy, rather than just thinning the deck a little bit and just being like being costly just to ditch one card from the hand and maybe set up some terrible plays, you can just pay two for a Ribri or something else that then just do so like so I have more cards do a lot more. But the Hellfire seventeen is a good negate, just when you're gonna see lead you've got a free negate every t like in, in each turn you've got this card you can use as a free negate that plays itself down and it could be combo with after. It's pretty cool. And this Android seventeen is pretty decent. You can yeah, draw a card and filter to set up the seventeen and eighteen 
the Android 7, 18 and, and cell cards under your lead. So that way you've got it. So when you're, Z, when you're a Z leader, you can cycle through the the chain of the Z leads because it's a deck that has multiple Z leads. And then you've got the Activate Main, which if you do have it under a Super 17, then you get to absorb one of your opponent's battle cards. That's pretty cool. Now, that's actually pretty decent. Be able to just go choose one of your opponent's battle cards, absorb it under your Super 17 card, switch it to Activate so you can attack with it again or block it or have it to restart the block, which is pretty good. Well, not at the end of the turn, you have it then at restand at the end of the turn to block. That's still cool. That's nice removal. That's not just KOing. You're actually absorbing it, taking away from them, because if you just KO it, they eventually get it back from the draw for anything like that. Whereas take it under your card means it's away from them, so they have to try and ki kill the card to be able to take it back. So, yeah, just not the greatest support, and it doesn't really help with what the deck struggles with, but two cards out of three decent but then it could have been better support for an older deck that green deck that people want support for and yeah they kind of fell short for that and then we've got the last one so we've got today's little bit of spoilers because we step into yellow and it is for yellow sin so yellow sin getting a z leader so a never a sin deck with a very strong very powerful z lead and this one is omega shenron Collected minus energy, a Z leader requires 2 Z energy, 20k base as well. So 20k base top strike just gives me, just reminds me of the um, Red Sin one. And as well as that, he gets two other support cards in Nuova Channel and Oceana Channel, which are pretty cool as well. So we get two after we go to the Z lead. So with the Z lead, it's a Z Awakened simply just for one yellow. If you have a total of six or more Shadow Dragon name, Shadow Dragon cards among all cards in your drop and warp. You evolve it on you are awakening it on top of a yellow Singe Singe card being the Z le the leader because remember you can't Z awaken on top of you can only Z awaken on a leader. But then so one energy so it is a bit more costly than the red one because it only it needs to pay one yellow and it only requires two Z energy. But then it could be, as soon as you flip over your lead, which you can do early by dropping the without going down the you could ever go down the free life for the awakening. Or you can do the alter of awakening of getting the paying the four co four cost four specified cost yellow units on board to awaken a higher life total. And then this deck this leader doesn't require you to be at any life total. Just once you've got six or more shadow dragon cards among cards in your drop and warp, which is very easy to do because I don't want some in drops so they can play them out with the leader's effect. You can get this out as a big leader. Twenty k double strike is a good bit of pressure for it as well. And it's also got an altar, which is at the end of your turn. Draw one card and switch all yellow Shadow Dragon cards in your battle to active mode. So similar to the effect on the normal leader. Be able to well, it takes it takes away the you still have the draw, but it's not on swing. It's at the end of the turn. You get the draw. So if you swing with the awakened leader, get the draw, and then awaken into this, you get two draws in that turn because you get the draw from the turn from the swing and then a draw at the end of the turn from this auto and you still get to switch all your yellow shadow dragon cards back to active mode like the the your leader does like your leader does with both sides of it and you still get to switch all of them to active mode that's pretty good still and then you've got this activate main slash battle which is pretty good which is remove this card from the game as the cost you may discard six yellow cards from your hand just just yellow cards doesn't have to be shadow dragons or anything like that just six yellow cards have to be yellow if you do, choose all your opponent's battle, all your opponent's rest mode battle cards, ignoring barrier, negate the skills, and KO them. So when your opponent, if your opponent tries to go all in against this deck on a battle card, even if it's got barrier, you can just be like, "Here you go," and we're gonna just go negate the skills on it and just KO it. So even if it's indestructible, negate the skills, KO them. That's really good defensively, and a good way to just clear board. Because remember, with yellow, you normally like basically just. Annoying your opponent by just resting all their stuff, keeping the starts to rest down, keeping tap down, and even and remember if you want to attack, you have to switch your card to rest to rest mode to be able to attack. And yeah, this card has a really good defensive one. So if you awaken, you can do it in your opponent's turn. Swing with the awakened side, draw a card, go into this to then right into twenty k base double strike pressure. Then the turn draw one card and replace it. And then have this way to KO. And also, as a Z lead at 20k base, you still have your Dragon Thunder card as well, which allows you to basically give your lead, give a Shadow Dragon card a um, 5k boost for the turn. Meaning you can choose your leader to give it a 20, 5, never 5k boost, but a 20k base defensively, which is really handy. And that card can be played for free as long as you've got free tapped energy. 
And if you pay an energy for it, you can also negate your skill and stuff. But having that as a, also a card in the deck that allows you to just go 20, 25k base leader defense leader defend with, which is already hard enough in yellow with all its uh, floodgates and stuff, is pretty sick. That's really good support. I'm not, I wouldn't say that this deck is a deck I expected to get support because yellow Shadrangs are still strong. They're just, there's a lot of, there's other good decks in yellow that people prefer. And this didn't need support or anybody expected to get support but it's got some support and this is all very strong like this isn't a deck i would expect of it expect support or need support but they've gone ahead and done it and this is probably going to piss off more people than it actually helps out that play the deck but moving on we got the ever two cards for this deck for this deck to get support which is uh two battle cards both two costs and it's no nova shenron military spirit and oceana shenron spin technique so nova is a 10k whereas Oceanus is a 5k both have zero cost 5k combo and if both they're both riddled with skills pretty good one so Nova has two permanents first one being if your leader is a yellow shadow dragon card I think they both have the same one where if your leader is a yellow shadow dragon card reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one so they both have that permanence that's the only permanent on Oceanus and the first one on Nova and the other one is if this card is an active mode against barrier so what's in barrier is protected so as it swings it goes rest mode it's not protected but in the turn your lead will, of course, go reset the active mode, and it's got barrier to protect it. That's pretty good. Then onto his auto, which is just as strong, is auto limit one for burst one. If you have two or more energies to cost, so very minimal cost, when this card attacks, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode battle cards. When energy costs a four or less, and KO it. Then this card gets 5k power and double strike for the turn. So a double strike pressure for one energy. That's also popping their cards in rest mode as four or less is really good. So it gives a bit more support. To just Shadow Dragons in general, but also more aggro Shin Shenron support as well, which I like. That's really nice. And then you've got Oceanus Shenron. It has Barrier Blocker, I think similar to its 4 cost version. It's got that permanent, and it's also got a really nice altar, which is Burst 1, paying 1 yellow as the cost. When this card in a drop is sent to a warp by a Shadow Dragon Battle card skill, play up to 1 yellow Oceanus Shenron card with entry cost of 4 from your drop. So that's good. We know we've we know we've got um skills that allow to warp. We've got the eight drop pro eight drop TP one, which you warp seven from your drop and pay one to play it out as a thirty k triple yeah thirty k triple striker that then replaces off as a cantrip draws the card back. That's like a nice big aggro Shenron deck. Uh, bit they can then trigger this and get out a nice Oceana Shenron if you left one in your port in in your uh, drop. Or you've got the ever one, which plays over by sacrificing off a Shadow Dragon to play itself out, and then can remove a Shadow Dragon from your drop to copy its skill, well, that's four or less, with a specific power level, I can't remember exactly what. But it can um, warp something to copy its skills. So you can warp this to copy its skills to gain, to gain Barrier and Blocker on that, um, on that uh, Mega card, and then trigger this, to then play back out the four drop. Uh, from your drop, then have a never barrier blocker and has pretty good skills. So then restand and still have those skills in your opponent's turn. So this is really good sport. It's really good cards. Now I'm just the only thing I'm sad about is I got rid of my collection and I had it, the Shadow Dragon deck, everything of it, in quite high rarity as well. So I was quite sad for that. But then it's this would be a nice probably to pick up again and try out now because we have finals coming up. We're going to want to try and see this. This is going to be available for then, but not the set, not the next set, so not set 23. So once we got this out, gonna be some testing to see what I'm gonna take for finals. But then that is it for the reveals for this uh, anniversary box we got this week. But we do have a little bit extra support. We do have notification for finals now. We got the location and everything, and I've only taken the European one because from Europe, it's only what matters to me. If you want to, uh, they even even they haven't even notified us when um, the American one is. They just said every 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 regions. Finals and then didn't mention US, said it'd be a later date because it's always bigger in the US when it comes to the finals, and that's when they do more stuff because that's, that's their like, uh, that's their oldest. Like, it's like if you think of all the region's children, that's their oldest child that they care more about. So, for Europe, for the uh, finals, it's in December, so it's on Saturday, December the 9th, and Sunday, December the 10th. So, you yeah, have the first, uh, first day, day one, which was your Swiss day on the Saturday and then day two being a top cut and side events on the Sunday and it's located in Barcelona, Spain and organized by Jotmark so similar I think it's hosted that's the same 
lot that uh, organized it and run it last year for us, which is pretty good. But yeah, Barcelona is a little different. It's nice to have, nice to know we've got the announcement and confirmation of where it is this far in advance because we're currently in September, so we've still got three more months until it actually happens, and that's a lot better than I think we had last time. And so we can all prepare for it and get there and get all our stuff sorted ready in, in a good amount of time. And the nice thing is they let us know it different ones and you could attend different regional, different finals as long as you uh, travel there. So it's nice to know that we've also got the Spanish one and the French one as well that we could also attend, which is going to be cool. Go look to see if I can maybe head to the Italian one as well. Because um, I think with the difference between the French and Italian, Italian one is that the French events require at least half of your deck to be in French, which... I'm not all about getting French cards just to play in one event, or the Italian, which doesn't have that uh, one. So we're trying to see if we do that. And yeah, that is it. All, all I can I remember for this week's uh, news. So that is it. Thank you for watching. Feel free to com like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.